Welcome to podcast number three. I uh, appreciate everybody listening and, and taking the time to, to tune into all the podcasts that I've been doing. Um, overwhelming response uh, to the ones I've to the ones I've done, and I did ask for some people to to write me or message me, and uh, if they had a question or it's something I wanted to talk about, I would do that. And I was going to start a uh, kind of start a series of um, podcasts on on a, another subject, but I. I received some overwhelming response to um, to one thing, and so uh, I thought I'm just going to dive right in and and uh, tackle this one. So the the subject came up of overslowing your entry. So uh, I'm overslowing my entry. Why am I overslowing my entry? And and what can I do to fix it? And and what are some report cards? And where does it come from? So let's just take you right through that and and get that uh, get that figured out. Uh, and, and it is something I it typically I see a lot. Oh my gosh, the entries are so scary. Um, you know, a lot of people can get the bike off of a corner, but but overslowing the entries, going to the brakes too hard, or or whatever the issue is. So th- this is a pretty big deal, and it's and it's a big deal for a couple of reasons. One, it it, it you'll go quicker. The bottom line is you'll you'll go quicker. The the other one is is actually it'll be it'll be safer. And, and let me explain why. That if you overslow the entry, you go to the brakes. You go to the brakes super hard. Um, maybe you compress the front too much. Maybe the bike's out of shape, and then you realize you've overslowed before you've even gotten to the entry. So you you get off the brake. Uh, you look, but you know you finally you know look into the turn and figure out what's going on. You go back to the throttle, and then you turn in. You're actually turning in with less contact patch. So you've overslowed the entry. You're off the brake. You go back to the throttle. The fork's now extended. You've got less contact patch, and now you're going to be you're going to lean the bike over. And it's funny. Uh, most of the low side crashes that I see are from an underloaded front end, not an overloaded front end. An underloaded front end. They they enter the corner on the throttle, and then they add lean angle, and they continue to add some throttle or continue to add lean angle, and they're doing it with less contact patch. So this big, this is a big deal where you're where you're actually able to have some more contact patch when you you know getting into the corner, and uh, you'll you'll uh, be able to increase your overall speed when you go in. So I think one of the big deals uh, to start this off with is it, you, it's it's really understanding your environment, and when you understand what that radius of that corner has to offer. Uh, th- this will be a, be a big deal. I said it in one of the last the last podcasts that we talked about, which we talked about you know different technique with different rider and, and apexes and and you know what and, and then we also talked about uh, you know the whole brake to the apex and throttle to the apex. And we start to understand what type of corner it is and what that radius has to offer. And then once you identify, oh gosh, it's a it's an entry corner. Um, I'll use my brakes to or past the, the apex on an entry corner. When you start understanding what that corner has to offer, then you'll start understanding of, of really what the key is. It's not where you go to the brake that is important. It's where you let off the brake that's important. And th- this really plays into the fact of, of something that Casey Stoner said that I, I, I he said it in his, uh, his last year, his championship year. And he said, he said, I think one of the, the, the things that separates me from everybody else as a rider is he goes, I can identify every corner a little bit better than everybody else, and then I can, I can adapt to that corner better than everybody else. And I love that because not every corner is a 90-degree corner. Wouldn't it just be great to be easy, right? You know, on the brake, off the brake, turn it in, go. It'd be easy if every corner was not a 90-degree corner, but that's just not the case. So we have to be in a position to be able to adjust for every different radius, every different grip um, condition, uh, what our bike is doing, our environment, other riders around, or whatever whatever that is. So the, the report card that we have there is where are you letting off the brake? So where do you let off the brake? On an exit corner, because we're trying to get the bike slowed and pointed and drive it past the apex, we want to we want to let the brake off before the apex, so so we can start to have that as a reference on on those exit corners. And on those entry corners, you want to use the brakes to or past the apex. So suddenly now you have a reference there. Big entry corner, use your brakes to or past the apex, and that that'll automatically start start changing your thought process. It's where you let off the brake that's important. That's your reference point, not where you go to the brake that's important. Yes, sure, we're going to have some reference points. We're going to have a general idea. 
but don't get so locked into that. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you want if you're traveling the same lap time with you within two or three tenths or four tenths of a second, yes, you're going to have a general idea. But but I'm going to work on pushing my end of braking marker down because then I can rest, uh, run less neutral throttle. We'll talk about that in just a minute too. So first thing that you're going to look at is the radius of the corner. What does that radius have to offer? And what should I be taking advantage of there, entry or exit? And then the second part is, is where am I letting off the brake? That, that is such a big one. That, that's your deal, right? Where you let off the brake. If I can give a bunch of different examples, but if I'm riding, if I'm riding a, a thousand cc uh, a GSXR 1000, or if I'm riding uh, an SV650, I, I can guarantee that I, it, I almost let off the brake at w within feet. Of each other they're, they're very very similar to where I'm letting off the brake but of course on the faster bike I'm gonna to go to the brake much much earlier but where I let off the brake is the same so that's the first report card so here's here's here everybody wants a silver bullet and so here's the silver bullet to why am I why you're over slowing your entries it's your eyes that's all there is to it it's your eyes your eyes are not seeing it soon enough and you're not scanning back and forth to understand the environment so, okay, where do I want to let off the brake? Hey, that sounds great. How do you do that? You have to do it by seeing it. So we have a great drill that we work on at the Rick Days and, and a great drill that I work on with, uh, with uh, some of my top Moto America riders. I, I was just at Thunder Hill this week. Um, I worked with two number one riders. Uh, we went around, drove around the car uh, right out of the gate. And you know what we worked on first? our eyes, our eyes, our eyes had to be engaged, our eyes had to be in play, so literally can tell our brain what's going on and what, and what should we be doing. So your eyes are your silver bullet. So we got our, get your eyes in play, and, and you'll go to your brakes, you'll go to your brakes essentially when you're, when, you're, when you're scared, go to your brakes when you're scared, and once you go to your brakes, then your eyes will move in to where you want to let off the brakes, and they'll scan back and forth. You'll use your depth perception to be able to adjust that brake pressure so it'll tell you where you're going to let off of them. And, and then, it's, it, and here's what's funny, it's the same thing that you do when you pull up to a stop sign in a car, right? You just don't drive your car, slam your look at the front of the hood, slam the brake on, and go, oh crap, the stop sign's way up there. No, you look at the stop sign, right, and then you go to the brake. And then you use your depth perception back and forth to adjust how much brake pressure you need. This is the exact same principle. So where are you going to let off the brake? How do you do it? You get your eyes into play. You get your eyes into play, your eyes scan back and forth. The more information, the more that you can see, the more information you can take in, the more information you can react to. So we've got to get those eyes to move back and forth. And, and that'll start getting your depth perception going. And, <clears throat> but, but, Looking at your motor controls, we also need something that gets our motor controls going. We need something that, if every time you go to the brakes is 40%, no matter what you do with your, with your eyes, it, it's not going to make any difference. So the initial brake application, that first five, so here's what matters with your braking. Your first 5% and your last 5%. That's what matters with your braking. The middle 90% of that braking adjusts for the radius of the corner. But if you go to the brakes initially at, say, 40%, 50%, you're now a victim of whatever that brake application is. Bang! You went to the brakes at 50? Well, I hope it's a 50% brake corner. I, you know, I, I don't know. What we want to be able to do is we want to go to the brakes at, at 5%. We want to have that initial squeeze. It doesn't mean the initial squeeze is slow. It's still a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but it's still a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's not a 20, 50, 40, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, and then as your eyes become um, adaptable to your, to your situation, right, they become proactive at that time, then you can go, oh, here's my first 5%, the fork has started to compress, the tires started to compress, I got my contact patch going, I got energy built up into the suspension, and now I can add whatever brake pressure I need for that situation. If you just go to the brakes at bam, 40, then I hope that that's a 40% corner. So that initial 5% of that brakes is what allows us to adjust. And once you've got that 90% going, what's going to give you that last, the last 5%, the last 5% of your braking, that, that is what allows you, is your, is your fine precision, your fine line adjustment is the last 5%. 
So your first 5% of your breaks might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let that front end set. The last 5% of your braking, and if you get to go car driving with me, uh, this is a big thing. I, I, again, I worked on this just this week at Thunder Hill with the riders that uh, we were messing with. And the last 5% of your braking is literally 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, depending on the radius. A shorter radius corner, it'll be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. A longer radius corner, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, until you get that direction. So that's what allows you to get that last, where am I letting off the brake? So the first five, last 5% of the brakes end up being a huge deal uh, uh, with this whole process. So now we got some good things going, right? So we've got, uh, we've got um, what kind of corner is it? Where am I letting off the brake? We got our eyes engaged. And literally think about that with your eyes. You want your eyes and your motor controls to match. Your eyes and your motor controls to match. You want those synced up. And how that starts is with your first five and last 5% of your brakes. Let's take a look at a couple of other things that might be holding you back there. And that might be some body position uh, issues. So if you're entering the bra braking zone in the middle of the seat, you're going to overslow your entry. I Sorry, you are, right? Because you're in the middle of the seat, you get all your braking done, and then you finally go, okay, okay gosh, I'm, I'm, sl I'm slowed down enough, now I can move my body over. Watch MotoGP. Watch World Superbike. Watch AMA Superbike. They may go back to the middle of the seat, but before they get to the brake zone, before the, right before they go to the brakes, they'll move their butt over. So if you enter the braking zone in the middle of the seat, you're going to overslow your entry. That's how it is. Same thing with pinching the gas tank. We don't pinch the gas tank when we go to the brakes. We have our knee out. Same thing. You'll overslow your entry. You'll run out of time. So the thing about pinching the gas tank as well is it ends up putting a lot uh, too much weight on your inside arm. If that outside leg is out, right, the knee, the knee's out, the foot is ready, it's com it's engaged, and then the, the turn-in process becomes becomes one motion. Instead of bringing your knee back out, flexing your heel again, and then getting your upper body uh, over to, to load the peg. So inside foot becomes a big deal there as well. So if you're getting that first part of it, that ne this next part of it with how you're ending the braking zone body position-wise, Entering in the middle of the seat, that's not going to work. Pinching the gas tank, that's not going to work. And where that inside foot is, uh, big, big deal. We've got to get the weight off that inside arm as you turn in, right? You're going to slowly take that weight off that inside arm and put it on your inside foot uh, to get the bike to turn. The, the bike is not going to turn if your inside arm is straight. That's all there is to it. Or you're going to wear yourself out. So we've got to get that thing relaxed. So... <clears throat> The big takeaways for this, and let's give you some real good report cards for this, is the first one is identifying where you're letting off the brake. Take a look at that. Draw it out, right? Get your track map out. Draw it out. Where am I letting off the brake? Put a dot where you're letting off the brake, but maybe put an X where you should be letting off the brake. And that'll give you something to go with to be able to, to figure that out. Oh, how do I get from here to there? Oh, I got to use brakes lighter and longer at the end of my 5%. Oh, I got to get my eyes into play more. I got to get my inside arm unhooked. I got to get more relaxed in there. So good report card there uh, to help you identify where you're letting off the brake. The second one is, is how much neutral throttle are you using? And look at some of these some of these tracks. My goal at just about any racetrack is to use no neutral throttle. And of course, some tracks it's impossible. The radius of the corners are so long. But I'm still going to minimize that. I, I can tell you at some tracks, oh gosh, um, some of the Miller tracks, uh, even, even um, uh, Miller uh, East and West, uh, my goal is to have no neutral throttle. Thunder Hill, for instance, I'll have no neutral throttle except turn two. So that's my report card. If I'm using a lot of neutral throttle in a particular corner, then I realize that I could have used my brakes a lot more efficiently uh, and, and start thinking about where, I'm, where am I letting off the brakes and get my eyes into play in there as well. So some good report cards there of, of identifying and being able to, to literally coach yourself with this is identifying where you're letting off the brake and then how much neutral throttle you have and then and diminish that neutral throttle. So... Some good things for you uh, to think about with this one. Uh, where, why are you overslowing your entries? Uh, a lot of good stuff in here that, that uh, you can start to mess with. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, I'll have something out uh, after this pretty soon. Thanks so much.